Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody and to you, Mama. Yeah, same to you, daughter. Happy New Year on this nice chilly January 2024. Feeling good? Yeah, I'm just staying warm. Me too. It I'll be right up staying warm. Yes, it's very much winter outside. It's that time. You no snow, no snow then. We have not gotten <laughs> the snow. I don't want to actually get snow. Maybe a little a little frost. Yeah, we get we're gonna get some snow. I'm gonna tell you that. Frosty flakes. It usually happens after Martin Luther King's birthday. Okay. I'm gonna um keep an eye out. We're gonna check back on that. Yeah. So I want everybody to stay nice and warm and toasty. Get you something to drink. Cause I'm Angela the mom. I'm Roger the daughter. And, and this, this is talking, talking Brown. Sugar. All right. Roger? Yep. You gonna tell them where to find us? Yes. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Talking Brown Sugar or on Twitter at Talking Brown Sugar. You can email us at talkingbrown.sugar at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe. We're on YouTube as well, so you can listen there. Play it on the go, especially if you have premium. It's all that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Martin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eat a man. Oh, Martin. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh. We're in the sugar bowl today. Mom, you were talking about QR codes being everywhere. Yeah, man. Y'all see these QR codes? They're all on your TV. They when you, when, when you make a doctor's appointment, they want the QR code when you come in. Pre check in. Who's who's checking this stuff? Who's doing these jobs? You know, I mean, you go to the airport, you go places to eat, you look on your coupon. I mean, it, nobody don't want to talk to nobody no more. Nobody want to put nothing out there for you to read. What if you don't have a high tech phone? Even though you might can get a free phone. I mean, I even hate to say the word sometimes. You know, these other other link phones you can get from the government. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it's yeah, they have iPhones. They have iPhones now. Um, if you qualify for different federal aid programs, mm-hmm. you can get a free iPhone with some data. Uh, so that's something, a resource. Yeah, um, QR codes are very popular and still around, I think, because they simplify you having to type in, like in your search bar of the website, you can just scan the QR code and go straight to wherever they want to send you um, mm-hmm. and quickly pull up the information. But like you said, if you maybe not have a phone or if the person who posts, maybe they digitally posted the QR code and you're viewing it on your phone, then it's like, how do I scan it on my phone? If it's on my phone, you're looking at it from your phone. Um, yeah, if they're, if they're used properly, I think it's save time. I mean, I have a QR code and I'm always for the new technology of fast, easy, you know, but some people, I, I, I watch some of the older people and some young people struggle just looking at me and nosy. So I'm like, you know, we still need to have both for whatever people are trying to download. Accessibility, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you go to the gas station, you know, they want you to QR code if you want some kind of discount in the store. And you have to be careful because everybody's scamming now. That's right. the new age. Don't, don't just go around scanning random QR codes. Yeah, and look at, oh, let me play the game. Back of some kind of cereal or something, QR code. Next thing you know, it's, it's taking all the parents' money from their bank accounts. Just have to be mindful. And did you, you got the notification um, if you were in the state of North Carolina <laughs> from Spectrum talking about if there's um, a heavy storm, the wind oh, yeah. came. Yeah, they were saying, don't call Spectrum, call your utilities company. Ah. I was like, yeah, Spectrum got some nerve. You know, a lot of these businesses are putting different information in your bills because I have gotten one from Duke Energy. And they're telling you to unplug your coffee maker and pour your hot coffee in a uh, thermal. Keep it warm. I mean, it's a good idea, but is this how oh, to save it? money on the electricity? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was no. like, really? 
that might not work for everybody who does not do that. You know, like some older people, even young people, you Can't moving about trying to go out to work or you might not think they unplug your coffee maker. That's some people's alarm clock sometimes. So. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's just the spectrum notice when I saw it. I said, so are you, a, do they get a lot, I'm guessing they get a lot of calls from people when their power goes out, they're calling spectrum like, hey, my Wi-Fi, my internet isn't working. And it's like, well, yeah, your, your power's out. <laughs> it looks like in your area. But I feel like I don't know. I feel like that could be part of the service too. Is just I'm going to forward you. Where are you at? I'm gonna forward you to. Yeah. This be but I understand. They're like, don't call us. Yeah, because you got don't all these third party people you don't know about. Dominion Energy. Don't don't call us. <laughs> that is not why you having problems. I said they're trying to get ahead of the curve because they have crappy service. Yes. Um, talking about some. Hey, it's not us. It's the storm. It's not us. It's you. You got to blame somebody. What they say? Call Tyrone. Better call to Trinity yeah. and leave us alone. Call it. You better call your bitch. You better. We say Chomo. Call it. Because we don't have no new models. They're all refurbished. And they raggedy. We, um, just having, we just having some fun with your spectrum. spectrum. You can still sponsor us. We'll talk. We'll talk nice about you. With the, you know. Yeah. Give us some, yeah. Give us some perks. And if the service improves, just just let us know what we can do other than upgrading the modem. That's all, baby. Um, my random thoughts. Um, I noticed a lot of designs that try to show that something's from the future or to explain complex. Um, structures like space, time continuum, black holes, and just things that are from other planets. They use a lot of cir- circles in their designs that closely play circles. And it triggers uh, my trypophobia. If you've listened to us for a while, you know that I have trypophobia, which is a fear of closely placed circle patterns, um, especially when they're organized. So things like the honeycomb pattern, sometimes like um, like if you think of like a cheese, like a Swiss cheese type pattern, I don't know, it just grosses me out. Like I get like an itch and I could, uh, like the urge to puke sometimes. Like it really is just gross. Um, and I didn't know that was a thing that existed until I watched a video about um, if I had that. Because I've always wondered why certain things make me feel sick when I look at them like sponges. Mm-hmm. Don't really care for looking at them. So I have the two-sided sponges and I look at them from the green top, you know, the green and yellow top. But yeah, I've noticed a lot of shows do that. Uh, one recent example is the one of the main villains in the latest Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse video or movie. I don't want to say video movie. Um, he has a bunch of holes in his basically person on his body that represent different portals and yeah, black holes yeah, into yeah. other universes. It just that grossed me out. I said, "Oh, I'm gonna have to look at this through the whole movie." Great. So anytime he was popping, I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> it just looked gross. Um, but it's not a world and it's just something I noticed that circle that circle pattern is used to denote like complex stru- structures and futuristic things. Another thing I noticed is that I cannot read while listening to podcasts because I'm too invested in the conversation and trying to process the conversation while developing my thoughts about whatever's going on in the podcast. But I can write while listening to podcasts and stay on subject and have like a clear focus and when I read my word back it's like oh okay that's a clear coherent thought I said what I need to say um and then with music of course I can do anything especially when that music is instrumental yeah I like podcasts too sometimes I just just listen to people vent or whatever they're talking about or whatever I choose to listen to and yeah. music um cooking yes cleaning I used to like to turn on instrumental when y'all were kids <laughs> It would slow y'all pace down. Y'all would listen to it like I don't hear no words, and I would watch you slow yourself down, and then you sometimes you just be moving to the music. Mm-hmm. And guess what happens next? Nap time. Yeah, that's you right about that. I remember you cutting on some music and just start yawning. Mm-hmm. Some saxophones, some smooth jazz. Yeah. And then you know they got kids um, jazz out too that could relax kids or while you're reading and doing your homework. Mm-hmm. Just relax you out because you don't have a stressful day. Kids have stressful days. They might not say it. You see when your baby come home and your child come home and they're looking all frizzled. You got to put a little music on. Music can't change the mood. 
Um, when you don't want to clean, turn on some music. So you yeah. Know, get bumping, busting them, sc- them scrumps. So get down, get down. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ready to head over into the sugar cubes? Yeah, some sugar cubes, a.k.a. the news, where we put a little sugar in your cup. Yeah, we're in the sugar cubes. Our first story, of course, we have to talk about the interview that everybody's talking about and responding to. you. Mm-hmm. Um, Cat Williams came on to Club Shay Shay to, you know, just air out some things that were on his chest. He mentioned he Ricky Smiley, Steve Harvey, Tyler Perry, said to the entertainer, he's on love, um, Tiffany Haddish, Kevin Hart. The list is long. Um, the interview itself was over three hours worth of like bars, some entertaining sound bites. There were so many things. Um, Cat Williams got off his chest and you know made statements about those different people and talked about his charity work, all kinds of things. And yeah, the internet is this is <laughs> going. You gotta yeah. listen to it, people going through each point that was made and calling people out and responding to the claims that were made, finding evidence and also critiquing responses from the, those different celebrities. The last update I saw from Shannon Sharp as of today, he said that interview so far has gotten 27 million views since it aired earlier last week. Um, as well as the first day, I think the first 24, 48 hours, it was over 10 million. So, yeah, it's, breaking it's, records. it's viral. It's viral for many of the um, interviews Shannon Sharp has had on his show, Club Shay Shay. Um, yeah, uh, it's lots of jokes. It's just funny um, to hear Cat Williams talk and sip very loudly. Uh, that word gives great interviews because he doesn't do a lot of them. When he does, he puts on a show for sure. He's just let, like you say, he's just letting things off his chest and sipping. Like, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yeah, we don't have to spend too much time on it. Some of the things, thoughts I yeah. had, of course, um, there were lots of fat jokes. So it wasn't just you know some good some good comedy, but it was like some fat jokes. It was. Uh, a little bit of homophobia, some sexism uh, from both sides, really. And one thing that I was noting uh, while watching was Shannon Sharp's ability to moderate their conversation. And then I listened to the Nightcap Shannon Sharp's podcast with uh, Ocho Cinco. It's called The Nightcap with Unc and Ocho. Mm-hmm. So the two of them talk, and Shannon Sharp's response was that, you know, basically get up off me because I'm not a journalist. If you want people to, you know, if you want me to have like these hard hitting questions and all these follow ups, you, he was like, you can go to 60 Minutes for that. And that was my critique when I first, one of my critiques when I first watched and listened to the Cat Williams interview uh, was that I felt Shannon could have done better in not just how he moved from question to question, so transitions. But also some of the questions he asked were like, okay, we we know some of this stuff. We can infer some of this stuff. Um, but it was it was really Cat Williams trying to try to I know trying to rein him in was probably difficult. And he said Shannon Sharp said that on the uh, Unc and Ocho show, the Nightcap, mm-hmm. he had a hard time trying to know when to shift, when to ask what question. So they kind of were just going on the fly with the questions he had. Um, prepared, just kind of following Cat Williams' lead, because, you know, he asked one question, and Cat just took off. It was like, boop, 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 I guess there was boop, something boop. that was brewing anyway, and I feel like if, if it doesn't fly with people, you don't have to listen to it, you know? Right, and that's what Shannon Sharp was saying. It's, it's entertaining, like, and just letting people like us, we don't know what's going on in Hollywood or behind the scenes, and Cat Williams just letting people know what's going down. Mm-hmm. You know, you can kind of see it, or wonder why Certain comedians don't click or 
what's their brand? Because everybody have their own way of making us laugh. Some of it's dark, some of it's humorous, some of it's like, I know you didn't go there, because you know, like when you go places, I go places, I can find some funny in some things, even though it's terrible. I keep it to myself, but I've been I might be chuckling inside. Right. And that and that's what a lot of people who are I guess comedy connoisseurs, people who actually do enjoy the art of comedy and writing in that way, comedians are people who reflect society, truth, and reality in a way, like flip it on its head, see how far they can yeah. push boundaries of what social norms are to make the joke, to make something funny. So yeah, you're going to touch on different topics that might not be completely funny or might be like a ha ha all day. But yeah, my critique was just that Shannon Sharp should not call it an interview or produce it as an interview. Maybe it might be a producer thing. They need to market it as conversations with Shay Shay yeah. and not like an interview because sometimes people go into it thinking, oh, this is going to be an interview. We're going to ask these tough questions or we're going to have some you know, real follow-up. And he, I think he did okay. Um, yeah. I knew the surprise the cat was so articulate to come out the way he did articulate he was animated he had everything he was pulling out everything in his bag like you said stuff he needed to get off his chest and i think shannon sharp also being a celebrity and knowing the people that he's talking about it's like i might not be able to laugh as hard or say the first thing that comes to mind so then you have to yeah pick and choose what you're going to say because those are your friends too and you, gotta, you, you got a job to do too you're trying to get paid so you're doing your job don't don't get sensitive you know, the, you know. Sometimes we get sensitive. Like, man, you supposed to be my boy. You supposed to be my friend. But like, I gotta eat, man. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta bring these people right. in here. And another thing, Cat Williams said in the interview, Ocho said it on the Nightcap podcast. Shannon Sharp also agreed that they are trying to create a safe space on that podcast. But I'm like, there's no way you can have a safe space on the internet. There are too many viewers. It's too many. The internet isn't necessary. Right where we are with the internet, I don't think there is such a thing as a safe space online. Mm-hmm. I think that's easy to create in more physical in person spaces, even some hybrid spaces. But when you have a show that's that public facing, I don't really see that as a safe space because you have to curate what you're going to say with the understanding that once you put it out there, it's not yours anymore at all. So that was just another thing I noted. Um, and then another thing was that, I don't know, Cat Williams was just, I think you the notes I would take from Cat Williams, I would say performance, because some of that was performance, just like in his timing and how he took the loud sips of his drink, the pauses before he said certain one-liners. Mm-hmm. He definitely was putting on a show, um, and it was kind of like a stand-up. Yeah, like his stand up. It was like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get messy with y'all. Y'all don't know when you take them sips. Like, yeah, it's getting mm-hmm. really messy. And it reminds me of when people on, not people. I would say the first thing I thought of that I would compare him taking those out sips of his his liquor was like, all right, get ready. It was like a signal to like, I'm about to say something. I'm turning up. You gonna turn up? You ready to turn up on you? Laugh, yeah. Slap your knee and. It reminded me of like when Lil Wayne, when he would start a song, how you would hear him lighting up before he would start. Like he was about to be in his bag. He was about to, you know, drop some bars. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just know like it's like sips tea, you know, how people are like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm about to get messy. We're about to spill. We got to spill his tea. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's what I really thought. That's That's the vibe I got. It was definitely something I don't think anybody was ready for but it was a nice way to start the year off a very entertaining way to start the year off ah 2024 we're not playing no more i think everybody taking the gloves off you get knuckles you get knuckle sandwiches you get all kinds of tea in your face green the- black blue mm-hmm. chinese oh you name it you getting all the tea on the rocks off the rocks <laughs> you're getting that that and it was just confirming some suspicions or talk or rumors people have already had and things people have already heard or said. Um, but some of the funniest responses from other comedians that I'm seeing oh, they going um, off about his clothes, some of his Fendi. <laughs> the funniest things, the funniest responses to me were from comedians who weren't mentioned, 
Yeah. Um, Coco Brown, she had a nice thought on TikTok. She was talking about, you know, I was a mention. And, you know, she, I don't know if you know this, but she acts on a couple of different shows with Cedric, the entertainer, um, The Neighborhood. They had another show, I think it was Soul something, where Cedric, he played a pastor in East Nashville's first wife. I don't forget. I forget the title of the show, but Coco Brown played different roles with him. And she's a comedian. And she was just like, I wasn't mentioned. And she was saying, sometimes God protection is rejection. She was like, I don't have to worry about anybody calling me out, talking about me. Because they don't look at me like that. They don't look out for me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's like a, that, I thought that was funny, but a, a good note. That like sometimes you not being in the spot spotlight is safe as part of your bag or part of your you know bread and butter. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with doing well and being known in the industry and not being like famous. Right. Fortunate, not famous. Um, Mike Epps, he said, Dang, cat, cat ain't rich me. He said, Talk bad about me. Why anybody say my name? Not one time. I thought that was funny. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, everybody's responding. I think Steve Harvey hasn't responded to anything yet but it this will be something people talk about for a while oh yeah we got Ari spears he's talking out oh. dl everybody's putting 10 cents in mm-hmm. so yeah it was i had i had a lot of deeper thoughts but now that i'm like looking at my notes again that i took about the interview itself just um thoughts i had on the production and what it takes to have a viral moment and what that means for someone that's a celebrity and how you can use your fame to shift certain narratives. And it was also interesting to hear Shannon Sharp on the Nightcap podcast in reflection of this interview and just his shift in the entertainment industry, specifically being a host. Mm Mm-hmm. A professional host talking about how you know people are hating on his success with this particular interview and his show um club shay shay because it's doing numbers and he also just was honest about why don't i have you know positions like straight hand or different people who are of similar backgrounds you know that sports transition to host or co-host of a show why haven't i had that kind of success or why haven't i been put in that kind of position and he was just talking about that i feel he might get it now right and and then that's what it takes sometimes too you have to make your own lane or create your own lane because sometimes different is good Mm -hmm. you know a different spin sometimes they get so robotic you you look at this podcast or this talk show it's like everybody's getting like i want something different Mm mm-hmm I had a similar thought like to that as well. I was thinking, especially for people that aren't centered in media. Yeah. You, if you don't fit the mold or they feel like they have their quota met, it will be harder for you to get that position. Well, you're not falling by what they want you to do. Mm-hmm. What they seem is right for the public view. Right. Or they feel like we already have somebody who talks on that. Yeah. Who looks like you, who sounds like you. Even though everybody else sees and follows you for a different reason and would follow you and your show for a different reason. It might not be seen like that by industry standards. So sometimes it is. Cause I'm, I'm glad been, people, more people are stepping outside yeah. of what's the industry standard. Like you said, cause you can see different interviews with different people and the concept. It's, some people do take the interview, you know, for who they're talking to, but, but you could tell like, Oh, so-and-so's interview was much better on that girl's show or his show or, they just like walk, 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 and it doesn't interest nobody. You know, they're just doing it because their people said, you know, you might need to be on this interview. Go to this person because, you know, they got a big brand name and they go on their talk show, or whatever. And this sounds like, what? You know, it's just boring. And Shay Shay just bringing some light to it. Let them talk. Yeah. Yeah, different is good. Uh, rapper Boosie was slammed by the internet for walking out of the color pur- purple over, you know, the lesbian love story. Um, yeah, he went online talking about he took his daughter to the movies, had to walk out, another older, two other older couples walked out as well. Everybody on the internet said all the points, you know, why, why are you, why are we, why are we having this conversation, Busy? Like, we know what the color purple is, even though the most recent one is based off of the Broadway version. Right. There has always been 
you know, the lesbian um, scenes and part of the story. But it's like you overlooked everything else before that, that, that piece that he was saying that he had a problem with. It's towards the end of the movie. So it's like you, you watched everything else and didn't find any problem with that before walking out. <laughs> and then, you know, people were also saying, well, you, you aren't the best example. You haven't shown us the best example of parenting. So it's interesting that now you want to make this claim, particularly to, you know, cause rifts over LGBTQIA stories. Well, there's no need for it. Yes, it was just unnecessary. And so the internet ate a lot of valid points were made about why this was just unnecessary for him to share with the internet. But, of course, we're talking about him, so it worked. Um, Because, you know, he got to keep his ratings up, too, so I guess he must just needed something. Yeah, where where is, is there new music out? I'm not listening, but let us know what y'all are listening to from Lucy Badass. Yeah. New, that's new. Because I'm like this. If you go into the movies, you see what it's about. You already know. All right. And then you're taking, kids to the movie. you're taking your kids to the movie and you aren't looking at the rating beforehand. Because I like all the people, you know, everybody's got something to say about this movie. I'm like this. If you don't want to go, don't go. Don't spend your money. Just wait for it to come on TV. Because everybody has their right to their opinion. You know, we all like different things. That's what makes us. But so- it's, it's more than just an opinion when your opinions are all against a certain group of people yeah or constantly critiquing a certain group of people it's that's that's a choice yeah that's it's, what I'm it's more than opinion it's trying to and, shift and he's not, and especially he's, when you're aware of your influence and he's not the only one you know so. right right but it's just it's just something to know it's like why are we doing this with and then, and then with our media with black media why are Pick something else to focus on and enjoy. Yeah, talk about we, talk about what you enjoy. Why, why, let's do that. Just talk about what you enjoy. He did. <laughs> you want to make he, complaints? No, talk about what you enjoy. Not. Yeah, that's yeah. what he's doing. That's what sometimes some people like to be the negative. Right. I think that's what's popular now. Yeah, the negative. Complaining yeah. about different things. It's like, okay. What What are we enjoying right now? Go to the movies. Get that good. High cholesterol popcorn like I like to get all that extra butter and sit down and hey, enjoy. He didn't enjoy the movie just <laughs> so oh, look. If you feel like that, go to sleep. Not go to sleep. That's why they put ratings on anything you see. If you knew the rating was not gonna be what you thought, why you take your child in? Because it was your choice, yeah, but think smarter, parent. Speaking of children, a thirteen year old gamer becomes the first to beat the unbeatable Tetris by breaking it. In San Francisco, the Falling Block video game Tetris met its match with 13-year-old Willis Gibson, who became the first player to officially beat the original Nintendo version of the game by breaking it. Mm. Uh, so basically, his score was, um, it was just like 9999 and the screen froze, so he beat it. Um, it's a kill screen. That's what it was. Like, you played it into the code glitches and crashes the game. And so it does. It might not sound like much of a victory to anybody right. thinking about it, um, as far as high scores count. But it's highly coveted achievement in the world of video games. Yeah, so records involve pushing hardware and software to their limits and beyond. Round of applause to that young man! Yay! Yeah. Uh, so you beat Tetris. <laughs> Who can say I beat Tetris? Once it starts speeding up, you get a little, you, you know, one <laughs> misstep, game over. Game over. Something else that's over, price hikes are no longer outpacing overall inflation. For the first time since early 2022, food prices aren't rising faster than overall inflation. Although dining out remains a pricey endeavor, the latest consumer price index index, um, showed that food prices increased 2.9% for the year ended in November, coming in below the headline inflation rate of 3.1%, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, So that's the first time since January 2022. Um, And they said it's because grocery prices are to thank for that. Um, Some grocery prices have been understanding that the food supply chains have been impacted, but yeah. not allowing certain products to be purchased in lieu of the price increase of different products. Um, they just sell climate control too, and paying the truck drivers and mm-hmm. the farmers. The, it's just a lot. And so that's also happening overseas. So European market supermarket chains are actually yanking off like popular 
brands, um, some PepsiCo products as well, because of the higher prices, basically trying to shame them for mm -hmm. hiking up the prices onto their customers. So that can be anything from Doritos, Lay's Chips, Pe Pepsi, 7 Up, Lipton Tea, Quaker Foods, all from stores throughout France, Italy, Spain, and Belgium. And in place of those items, they put notices or notes and signs to customers letting them know we aren't carrying these products at this time because XYZ company, um, you know, has increased the prices beyond what we're willing to pay or what we want to charge you for. That's something to note. It is. Because you go in a grocery store and go list, down. you come right. out with half the stuff you have on your list. Yeah, it's, it's, it was getting neck and neck between grocery shopping and dining out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even down and out, they let you know um, some items you might not, you know, you used to get and we don't have. Mm -hmm. Because of inflation. Yeah. First they was talking about the chicken wings. Now is everything. Right. And, you know, it's a presidential election year. So be mindful of what's going on in your states. Please vote. Come out and vote. Get your IDs ready. You know, we didn't want to, but we got to. Please right. vote. The last article for today. Unsold Christmas trees are on the menu for elephants and bison at the Berlin Zoo. I didn't know that there are so many different animals that are part of the cleanup crew for Christmas trees that you either had in your house and dump, so those get cut up. And then the ones that don't get sold, the zoos will take them for the animals. And also farms have mm -hmm. goats and um, different animals that will eat pine trees. And I think because I assume I couldn't imagine myself eating it, I don't understand why an animal would eat it, but of course... It's an animal. Maybe, they smell, maybe, maybe the aroma of that pine, those different pine fragrances make them make their palates water a little bit. Like a spearmint gum. Yeah. A little prickly gum. Mm -hmm. A little breath mint. Get them like, ooh, we we celebrating too. <laughs> but yeah, they take only the um, for the animals. They only take fresh unsold trees, so they don't accept trees from the public that could contain uh, leftover chemicals or decoration. yeah. So I think that's a nice little story. That really yeah. would clean your insides out, like eating some pipe cleaner. Yeah, for yeah. keep them going. Mm -hmm. So clean your breath and clean you out. And then have some fertilizer. So just help. Hey, a win win. Yeah. It's a win win. Might be a stinky win, but it's a win. <laughs> a win is a win. A win is a win. Where to find us? Yes, this has been another episode of Talking Brown Sugar. Uh, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Talking Brown Sugar, Twitter at Talking Brown Sugar. Again, you can email us at talkingbrownsugar at gmail.com. Let us know your sweet deep. That's a business that you want to promote with us. Also, follow us and subscribe on YouTube. Leave us five stars wherever you listen to us on your podcast platforms. And leave us a review or a note. If you want us yeah. to talk about something that you are thinking about or you see a new story you want us to cover, let us know. Yeah, because we're doing some new stuff. we got some exciting things to come for the new year. Yay. Yeah. Somebody had a birthday. What? This what? month, everybody, my wonderful mommy, she turned 60 this year. January 6th, she a Capricorn, period. She that girl. Don't get it twisted. She's headstrong, but also loving people. I think misunderstand Capricorns and think they're just like organized type A type people. It's like, yes, but they also have a lot of love and their organization comes from wanting to make sure everything is taken care of so that you can enjoy everything else. Aw, thank you, sweetheart. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday to you. To you. I'm Angela Lamar.